Yeah, dude, I live in Greenpoint and I work in Seapoint. Cool. Go for it, um, Cloud. The stage is yours. The stage is mine. Fantastic. Welcome, everyone, <clears throat> to Echo Point Cape Town. It is episode 8, and we have titled it Contenders Emerge. Tonight's quite a special one, though. With us, apart from the normal cast that we have, is Tech Girl. And Sam, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. The sun is still up here, which is really nice. So it doesn't even feel like nighttime at the moment. So Where let, are me, you, drop, Sam? let me drop the tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is the evening. I'm actually an hour ahead of you. I'm ahead of South Africa. So it's 8 p.m. here, but obviously I'm in Europe. So the sun doesn't set till like some ridiculous hour, which is actually quite cool. That does sound quite nice, to be honest. Just, I mean, I mean, for us, um, sun sets a lot sooner, um, even even during um, what winter, summer, even in summer, it still sets sooner. Anyways, that's not important. We have with us, as per usual, <laughs> Sun Phoenix, General Sound, and Ghastly. Hey, it's what's up, guys? <laughs> hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just gonna start off with a bit of introductions. Of course, that that was a very brief one there but we got I, I think a few questions to start off is probably the best way to go we can kind of branch out from there and i think best part to start is with you tech girl and the first thing we have really is tell us about yourself and how you got into your streaming and producing content and where you are now well other than liking and enjoying talking about the weather to be honest <laughs> uh, which we now apparently <laughs> can't do um so i started in radio actually i was actually on yfm about uh, 10 more than 10 years ago i'm giving away my age and studied journalism and that was kind of my vibe and then moved into like a more corporate role my brother always um was involved in esports he actually played dota for a long time i think he played with damage control at one point and basically how i got into esports was that i used to go to rage go hang out in the dungeon downstairs and just got really annoyed that like the people that I knew upstairs who were in the media just never went down to DGL downstairs. And I was like, this is such a cool community. And it's sad that like no one is, is checking it out, you know, and decided that I had a platform. So I would start talking about it. I was freelance writing at the time. So I just started writing about esports in different places. And then a few years later, when I started Tickle, it was just the obvious thing to start putting it on my own blog as well. That's, that's fantastic. I, li I like that you started out from the really the foundation of everything you were you were there in the pit where everything was happening and i can understand what you mean by the i think there was a bit of disparity there from media not getting all the gritty information that you were there well, i wouldn't really say gritty but the exciting information would be the, if you call it a dungeon it. it sounds pretty gritty <laughs> yeah, I it, does sound pretty gritty. it sounds cool and being like oh downstairs in the basement so i like to call it the dungeon because i just think it gives it a little bit more like it was cool there, man. It wasn't a basement. It was a dungeon. <laughs> so much Gives better. it a bit more edge. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it does sound cool, man. Sounds a lot better. So then, of course, that, that I would say pretty much blew up for you. You put a lot of work into that. And now we can see you up on the stage internationally with contenders for Overwatch. Um, just give us a bit of like a short rundown of how you found yourself in that opportunity what led you to go for it and all that because that is inspiring for everyone else down here in south africa still oh thanks man um well i started kind of just doing content at different um esports events by myself so i was just making these really silly videos and writing stuff and then someone came to me and said would you mind we don't have an interviewer um was it a dgl thing will you do some interviews in front of camera and i was like yeah oh, that's cool then ended up suddenly people were like, oh, we need a host for these events. And I was like, I don't really know how to do this, but I'll do it. Um, and then obviously the, the cool one was when I got to do Rage with Red Eye. So they said to me, oh, well, Red Eye is going to be hosting. Do you want to co-host with him? So I was like, of course. Oh, <laughs> that no. is yeah. amazing. <laughs> and, and I was kind of just stuffing around. Um, I wasn't really taking it seriously. I just did it because I felt like no one was really showcasing the players and telling their stories. That was why I was doing it. And I hosted with him, started having conversations with him. He kind of told me to sort of, if I wanted to be a bit more serious, that there was potential. Played with the idea for a bit and then finally decided to listen to him and put a bit more effort into it. He then signed me to Code Red, which is his agency, and they have a talent division. And from there, kind of would phone me. Well, I have an agent there now. I don't actually deal with 
um, Paul, there's an incredible guy there called Ben who who sort of works with me. And Ben would phone me up and say, well, there's an opportunity here for you. Do you want to try it? This particular with contenders was kind of out of the blue. Obviously, I think anyone who's part of the Overwatch community in South Africa knows that that I wasn't really in the Overwatch community. I was CSGO um, with the occasional Dota. And I got a phone call and it was sort of very much just a conversation of they, they've there was there was interest they wanted to have a chat to me um was you know i just want to have a talk with with blizzard we had a chat um i suppose they liked me because then they asked me <laughs> we, we can assume so from what they we've seen me, yeah they asked me to send um to do like a demo um asked me some questions funny enough asked me it was a really cool chat that we had and they just asked me on skype what i thought of owl what i thought about overwatch i gave an honest opinion and then they said to me, can you do like a demo of if you were hosting a desk? I was in the middle of working on WESG at the Metal Stage Studios. So I did a very strange, and I should actually find it one day because it's funny. Did a really funny demo where I basically spoke about Bravado Gaming and Big Five Esports CSGO teams. And then threw in a couple of like really bad Reaper jokes that I thought were funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sent so that off. Did you get this, you got time to prepare the demo, right? I literally, no, because they phoned me, they needed it over the weekend, and I was I was working WESG the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So at Metal State Studios, between, we did, I think it was, uh, there was it was Dota and something else in between the two, because we were doing two different games, um, or it was Hearthstone and CS, I can't remember, but I literally was just like, can we just quickly, do you mind just recording this for me? I did one take. I remember it was one take at the casting desk. I didn't even cut it. I just sent it because um, I wasn't. <laughs> the truth was, I didn't take it seriously at the time. I was kind of like, mm. oh, yeah, I'm probably in the running with like 70 other people. So yeah. Yeah. whatever. Um, also, South African, we don't even have servers. They're never going to consider me. Plus CSGO. <laughs> so just sent it. And then they phoned and they were like, okay, cool. Well, we want you to come and do season one. And I laughed a lot because I still thought it was a joke. But here we are. <laughs> Do you still yeah, think it's a job to this that's day? Incredible. No, now it's, now it's like a real hardcore job. And over, like, I, I've, the Overwatch fans are so passionate. Um, and the people yeah. I work with are so passionate. So, no, my, my entire mindset has obviously changed coming into season two. And, but yeah, at the beginning, it was kind of just, I'm, I am like that, though. I kind of just go sort of with the flow until I have to stop and actually concentrate. <laughs> it's nice. Well, th that, that methodology of going, going through things has definitely worked out for you and i can tell you right now i'm just scribbling down notes of come up with reaper jokes and probably add a few reinhardt ones uh, blizzard's got me right <laughs> and... yeah, reaper jokes man reaper jokes in csgo that's <laughs> apparently that's the the key no i mean i don't think so <laughs> i think i think a big part of the key yeah. is work with red eye at some point and get signed to his um, agency I, I, that probably didn't hurt at all I don't think, no, I mean, listen, I'm very, very grateful. And also I think that what's really important about Code Red specifically is they made me realize that one, I think it's it's a little bit of just belief in yourself. So I was doing this for a long time. Well, not for a long time. I mean, I actually hadn't done it at all, but I was kind of just doing stuff and, and enjoying it, but I wasn't really focusing on improving. I'd never gone outside of my little bubble to, to learn stuff. And I think mm -hmm. what was great about them sort of taking me under their wing is that they went right. They don't, they, they don't spoon feed you, but they kind of push you to be better. And they've got other talent that are, are phenomenally sort of talented and, and obviously have done huge amounts of things who are constantly striving to be better. So being in that sort of eco, that, that structure helps a lot because they kind of push you to, to go do more by yourself. Like you want to go and check that stuff out. So I'm very grateful because I've learned so much um, from the talent that are signed to them and from them as well. And obviously also they look after me. So Ben because my agents is like, oh my God, he's amazing. <laughs> so he's that, rad. That, that's really nice having that type of environment that you can bounce off of with and everyone's looking to assist each other with improving. I think that's actually something that any industry and any community can actually take away uh, um, from this is having that type of um, foundation and community around you, even if it is in this case, it is just your work environment the community. I guess that's this is an inverted commas. I'm actually making the hand signals with my fingers right now, but uh, I can imagine that just that just like incubates improvement throughout all of the people with, um, involved. 
exactly and i also think like the best people that i think i've been lucky enough to work with um and and the best people that i've dealt with are always people that are striving to help other people improve just because i think we all especially when you're on a broadcast and this is really like this is something that i i feel controversial statement time i don't feel <laughs> that this is this is pushed forward nearly enough in South African esports in yeah. general. And it's something that I wish this was fed more of is that you, the broadcast is only as good as the weakest link. So it's not about you. It doesn't matter if you pitch up and you put on the best freaking show in the world. Like if there is someone who is, who is not putting on a good show, that's on you because as a team, because you are a broadcast team and your job is to make a really good production, it's your job to help that person improve and bring them up. So if you're not, helping one another to put on the best production, then you're actually not doing the, the broadcast a, a service at all. Um, yeah. And that's, I think that's a really nice way to focus yeah. on it. So remember that it's not about you. It's not about being famous. You're there to showcase players. That's what you're actually there for. And yeah. if someone's struggling in the broadcast team, then you're all struggling. So you have to think like that. And it really makes the biggest difference if everyone is on that same page. Yeah, that, Jane, I, Jane, and and Gosh, yeah, yeah. How similar does that sound to being on a team? Like, hundred percent dynamic. We, we were actually talking very, about it today or yesterday. Uh, Sorry yeah, about that. Um, it's it's exactly the same story where your you your team is only as strong as, as your weakest player. Yeah. And if you're losing, it's not about you carrying or you being good or you whatever. It's think, about how are you affecting your team and their mindset and how are you uplifting your your weakest link so to speak it's, a, it's the same with the I broadcasting think... as well like Shazam was saying like the casting in South Africa in general also like we're all here to help one another out and that's something also we stressed about the last two days as well yeah 100% that, that's such a good um, nice way to sneak that in there Jane yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah that's interesting to hear I, I really I must say I really like that and I, I, I could carry on I could continue on this for about another hour or so, <laughs> just how nice it must be being in that environment and ask more questions about that. But instead of doing that, I would like to move a bit more, a, a bit more of a shift over to South African esports. I mean, um, specifically for Overwatch, um, especially with Ghastly previously playing in a team, Sun Phoenix and Jen still being in a team together actually and playing it. And from my side, just shoutcasting the matches that are happening. Um, where, fr from what you've seen, uh, Sam, uh, where would you say is the best improvement or the best place that we as a community should be looking at to not not necessarily get us on the map, but up the quality of not just our teams, not just our um, production value, but the community in general, and find a way to bring that type of incubating space into it from there. <laughs> So here's my thing is I didn't know the South African Overwatch scene and and it's, it's we all know it and it's it's hard I was CS:GO right then contenders yeah. came along I I suddenly started the, the moment that that I I knew a while before it was announced so the moment I knew I started sort of playing more Overwatch to get into it and understand it a bit better and I started following the South African scene so you all saw me start popping up in the groups and stuff yeah. and what surprised me the most about the competitive Overwatch scene in South Africa specifically is how much of a community there is the fact that you have these discords like it impressed me so much to see that there was this discord where everyone was talking where the games are constantly streamed they really are like you stream more games than most of the other South African esports. And it's a regular thing. And I know none of you are getting paid and yet you're doing it every week. You've got, the, you've, you've got the podcast, you've got all this stuff. And I was super impressed by how much the community is doing with very little return because other titles have all these tournaments and they do not do this. So I think that that's a really positive and I think it's a, it's a positive for the scene and it, and it kind of, made me feel like I had to do more to to promote the South African scene as well, because I think that there is this incredible core group that are, are willing to push it out there. And I also think that, so, so from a South African point of view, I think that's really good. And I do think that there is a good competitive scene. Obviously, until there's regular tournaments, it's really hard to to build yeah. that scene. And it's yeah. it's also really hard to get people to watch because there's nothing really, there's no story for them to invest in. Like it's a very long, other than sort of VS gaming, which is a very long league over a long period of time, people, teams move and change. 
Yeah. There's nothing. I, I think yeah. what frustrates me is we need an Overwatch tournament because a lot of small tournaments allow people to buy into stories because that's what they want. They want to buy into stories of players. And mm. yeah, it's it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because we need more tournaments, but to do tournaments, you need more sponsors. So wh- what do you do? But but I do think that the community is is a far Oh, I don't want to use the word better, but like it is a. <laughs> it is a. It's oh, a, you can. We'll, it's we'll, yeah, we'll fine. We'll also, take it. it is a, I was super impressed. Also, what I thought was different and, and what was interesting for me is when I started. So, for example, when I started on Dota, there's everyone knows like two years ago, the nickname Cringe Girl came out. Um, because I was, <laughs> oh, no. trying, I was trying to learn the game and I didn't know the game. And instead of and and i was trying it wasn't like i wasn't trying like i was trying to learn but instead of helping me the community sort of response was well you don't know our game cringe girl like now they're different and they don't like i think i've sat on a desk and i haven't had that but what i found really interesting about overwatch is the moment i jumped into the competitive discord and obviously i've got quite thick skin so i was ready for it dropped sort of was like cool can someone help me with this does anyone have access to this what can you tell me about this there was no animosity there was no cringe girl Mm -hmm. there was no what are you doing here I think the most I saw in terms of like negativity from the community was that when they announced me on contenders, a, a bunch of people replied going, well, she sucks at Overwatch, which I was kind of fine with because I do mm. suck at Overwatch. Like I've admitted yeah. when I play, I'm, I'm not very good, but like I can still host a desk and ask questions. But <laughs> I mean, that was about as negative as it got, which was, yeah, she's, she sucks at the game. Cool. But no one was like, she's mm. terrible and you should take off you should take off that desk and it was kind of like yeah but you do suck when i play you that's fine i can take that like i'm okay with that yeah general well, sam knows a lot about that <laughs> <laughs> thanks costly really appreciate it yeah. no problem <laughs> oh you gotta cheat yeah it's okay. so old. <laughs> <laughs> i'm um, sorry dude i should have waited till after <laughs> it's all good um yeah I, yo, that threw me off now. Carry on. Yeah, there was a train of thought was before that. I had a question with the glasses that shot me in the brain. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> well, after a very <laughs> d- direct <laughs> um, comment there from Ghastly, um, <laughs> ju- just going back on what you were saying there with the type of animosity that you faced, um, for one, I think it's very unfair that you face any animosity, to, or any animosity at all in regards to this because you've achieved way beyond anyone else here as well as way beyond anyone else's expect expectations but i still suck fantastic. at the game man there's nothing that's wrong fine. with saying i suck yeah. at the game like i don't that's think that's fine. Fine. i suck at the game too <laughs> that's I'm like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think that's animosity yeah. like if someone says you suck at the game i'm like i know i do so i don't have a problem with that i don't think it's mm. hate at all like also when when the dota guys just call me cringe girl truth is i've watched those vods i was cringe again i'm okay with that yeah. <laughs> it just makes you better you don't have like... to be you don't have to be good at the game to have a passion for the game because overwatch is more than just actually playing and yeah you know, there's can be a scholar there's, in the there's game. so many other aspects to it mm-hmm. like if you look at overwatch league there's so much going into the production yeah, and so. everything about it and you can still love it not from Some a of... higher level player perspective I, I know it's one or two of the analysts on the overwatch league they're like diamond players not even like at the top tiers uh, the players you know what i mean yeah. you can still become a scholar and still know the game like you know in its essence from so common uh, criticism from the uninformed because those do who job can't, if you, if you don't play grandmaster level, you know. Yeah, yeah, but remember, those who can't play <laughs> sit on analyst desks. <laughs> <laughs> <Too bad. laughs> That's what we're all hated boys. I have to say that really. <laughs> you know, I have to say that loud because I live with two Overwatch casters. So That's both. Yeah, they're both sitting in the room. This is why Leg Day, who is the, the contenders cast, is, is taking on The Sims because I've broken him to believe he can't play Overwatch anymore. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> And now we have that live. We, 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 now we have to just wait until leg day it comes back at you with like a ridiculously high rank. You know, leg and... day was like one of the top 500 in Europe two years ago. Like, two years ago, actually... though. Was it two years ago? A year ago. A year or um, two ago, season four. Season four, he was one of the top. He's actually, a, he was Remember very the, good. The season, the exact date he was last fi- top 500. <laughs> <laughs> he, was <laughs> he knows. He... <laughs> He remembers. He remembers. <laughs> uh, okay. Let, b- before 
I get stuck on this again. <laughs> let's. I think let's move um, because this has been a nice transition that we've we've taken through diving into multiple aspects and also talking about a bit of South African esports. And really, I'm I'm very proud with the community itself that you you can give us this sort of praise and that we gave you a different experience to what you had with other communities. Mm. It's. I, I imagine that everybody watching this and everybody that's going to come back to watch this is going to get to this part and just like feel this warm fluffiness inside and just be like it's actually worth it it's working things are things are happening so that's that, that's really really nice to hear yeah it's good to hear from the outside like people commenting on our community actually noticing us so it's really good 100 percent. yeah and and talking about our community, I think I'm actually going to hand it over to Sun here for a bit to just talk about last week's standings. Of course, as we have spoken, um, VS Gaming is currently the only league that we have in South Africa at the moment. Uh, there aren't any other tournaments active at the moment. Um, but we can tell you all about what's been happening on it because there have been a few up and downs, but most, a lot of it has been kind of what we were saying last week. Yeah. Yeah, so far, much of our predictions proving to be um, on the money, especially for Premier Division. But we'll mm -hmm. start where we always start, which is in First Division. And in First Division, top two, we've got our two Prem dropouts, Phoenix Rising, uh, <laughs> EDC Dominion, 100% win rate, two wins. Like, so far, untouched. An interesting result, EDC Dominion um, taking on EVO. We, we, the three of us last week, had... Dominion, we kind of didn't know where to place them. Yeah. thought Evo can take games of them, maybe, maybe even beat them in a series. Teams like Allflex and Equinox, perhaps as well. Yeah. Um, but as it turns out, DDC, right where they yeah. belong, based so on the last legs. I actually, I actually watched a bit of the game. It wasn't that much of like a pushover. Evo mm -hmm. still put it up in a fight, and I know Cloud was casting that game, so he can have a bit of opinion yeah, about I, it. Yeah, I can give a bit of insight on that yeah. because what happened is Cappuccino, who is currently, um, he's not only the team's current captain, he's also the in-game leader. So he's the one mm. shot calling and everything. Yeah. And he sadly had a power outage the night of the game about 15 minutes before the game started. And Ooh. due to that, they had to sub Eli in and he's usually their support sub. He, he can flex very well. He has quite a deadly McCree and Widowmaker, but he's... By all means, he's more of a Zen Mercy main. So having him move over to the DPS role and him not having an in-game leader, I think had a massive knock against them. And I like the fact that they still stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with DDC Dominion in that fight. Sadly, the cost, I don't even want you guys to go back on that because I had yeah. technical <laughs> issues coming out of my ears, sadly. But oh, yeah. the last the last <laughs> map was it was really nice and smooth. It ran nicely and it was a very good back and forth as well. So I'd love to see Evolution Esports come through yeah. with their full roster. Because I know, I'm looking forward to that. I know the last map came down to the wire, just literally the last fight DDC won. Basically the last yeah, it's yeah. such a shame, man. That's such yeah. a shame. I'd love to see these two teams face each other at full strength. Yeah. I think I think a game not to be sort of uh, left out here is I don't know if any of you guys watched a uh, Chronic Wolfpack versus Interitus. The Reinhardt play in that game was staggering. It was just amazing to oh, watch. Oh, Paragon, 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 yeah, Paragon. yeah. They yeah. Were just going at it the whole match. <laughs> I watched a bit that of was, that. It was such an amazing match to watch. I, I just want to quickly point out that the first time I joined you guys, I think this would be three, four weeks ago when I was on the first one. You mentioned I said Paragon. That, I said Paragon is the one to watch. I did say this, and it has come through, so... Yeah. Prediction is looking pretty good right now. Me and Sun <laughs> played against him, and we, we could feel his Ryan wasn't that bad. It was he was literally the like spearhead of the team, which is mm. what you want to see in a main tank. So it was mm. it was definitely fun to play against. Yeah, well, that game is casted as well. If you guys want to check that out, head over to Trinox channel. Um, Phoenix Rising Dominion on the top, like I mentioned, not unexpected. All Flex in third place again, another one we had propped up there near the top. Um, with a 85% win rate, they did drop one game to Equinox. That's quite important because last leg they played Equinox first and they lost 3-2, I believe, or 3-1. So this is a nice comeback from them, performing perhaps back to where we expect them to. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, no one commenting on that. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I can jump in and comment. I just haven't seen the game, so I feel like that would be really unfair. <laughs> uh, that, uh, these games wasn't weren't costed as well, so I don't have yeah. really opinion about it yet. But yeah, yeah. But it's expected. I can, but, um, a, I can give you a throwback to Cringe Goal and like make some random statements if you want. Oh, do it. Bring it. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's, no, no, let's not do that. <laughs> whenever you feel like it's time. I'll throw something in. Now's not natural, so we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I left a part of me behind. Um, so Wolfpack, we've mentioned strong team, but I think they'll struggle to to fight. Um, towards the top two. Just to confirm something, we were talking last week a lot about um, who was going to qualify for Comic Con, and I think it's been confirmed um, that top two of first division face the bottom two of Prem, and they fight it out for who goes to Comic Con. Yeah. And top six of Prem, they go to Comic Con. So it's not about top four like we were discussing. It's actually about top two. And as a standing now, Phoenix Rising and Dominion in first division, they look like they they're going to be fighting it out against the bottom of Prem um, for that spot in Comic-Con. Um, I, I, go for it. I was just going to say that that changes the dynamic quite a lot, only having two teams from Premier to fight up against... Um, I mean, two teams from First Division fighting fighting up against Premier, um, which I think we can do it another time. Maybe we go back and look at the leg, um, and we can discuss how far our predictions were from it. Yeah. Because we, that that changes things quite a lot um, going 100%. forward, especially on the Prem side of things, because there's more guarantees for Premier Division, yes. so it's a bit more cutthroat. And and I think when we come to Premier, we'll see why having a a four four split makes a lot more sense. Um, for for this scene in particular, but um, they've chosen to go with a six-two split instead for qualification. So, um, much much harder for teams in first division to get through. And so yeah, we've spoken about Equinox briefly. They beat Evo Esports, lost to to Project Allflex, both really close games. That Evo um, Esports Equinox game was a three-two win to Equinox. So really really tight stuff. And makes you wonder perhaps if if they were able to run their full roster against DDC, maybe that's more of what we'd be seeing. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a very big um, factor going in there for Evo. But moving away from Evo, I just want to um, ask you actually, because I haven't been paying attention to them that much, but Project Allflex, what are they looking like at the moment? I think we, we, we've spoken about them last week. We had them up there, top four at least, right? I think, mm. Jane, you and I were saying top three, even. Sorry, yeah, so, top three, definitely. Project Allflix. So, so this is kind of where we're expecting them to be. Um, they, they had a bit of a hurdle last, last leg against Equinox, like I mentioned, but they've overcome that this leg. So perhaps looking stronger than they were before. And in leg two and three, they were really strong on the cusp of going to Prem. So they, they can pull out an upset. If they beat one of the top two teams... There's no doubt in my mind they will go through. Yeah, and it's yeah, going to be interesting fixtures also next week because we're playing Evo and PF, we being uh, Phoenix Rising. We're playing Evo and... Interitus <laughs> and Evo. Yeah, no, no, the Sunday we're playing Interitus. That then, is this week. And, yeah, and then Thursday we're playing Evo and Sunday we're playing also a big... Quite a big thing. I think it's... Um, I can't remember the name. Equinox. Equinox, yeah. Equinox, yeah. Yeah, should be good. Should be tough. It's going to be an exciting week of Overwatch next week. A couple of big ones in there. Looking at, um, I think, Wolfpack could put up a fight against Equinox. Could be quite a spicy one, although that's probably on Sunday. Um, yeah, All Flex versus Evo, if Evo can feel their full team, could be a, a spicy one. Could be a real, real one to watch. And I think... PXR versus... A real, a real Masala State Gatsby right there. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> steak, whatever you prefer. Your favorite kind of Gatsby, that's what it's going to be. Um, so I think that about wraps up First Division. Solstice and, and Interior just bringing up the rear there. Not having the week they, they wanted, perhaps. But Solstice did play against us, which was a, a difficult match for them. But enjoyable nonetheless. And Interior just dropped their games to Wolfpack. And um, All Flex as well. So strong teams as well to, to lose against. So that's first division and moving on to premier division. We've got now, this is where we, we see 
some kind of gap in the middle of, of Premier Division. There's four teams tied for fifth place, and the top four teams are, are all unbeaten. So there's a seems to be a gulf between the top four teams and the bottom four teams. So that's Eden unidentified, GG and WRG on the top, all undefeated, playing various amount of games. Eden on in first place with three wins, unidentified and Goliath with two wins each, and, and boosters bring up the rear of that, that top four with one win. But it's interesting to see how how clear the divide is between the top teams who are yet to face each other. Well, look at Sunday's match coming up. We have or two matches. Uh, I know Cloudburst and I are casting White Rabbit Gaming and Goliath Gaming. And then right, right before that, I think Cloudburst, you were going to cast White Rabbit Gaming versus Unidentified on the same day. Uh, yes, if, if I can find a co, I will be doing that and cast... Um cast both those games on Sunday just so we can get as much coverage as possible, especially because these are the big teams clashing now, which is the most exciting part of the leg. Yeah. And I mean, these standings, I'm not too sure how the seeding happens when we get to Comic-Con and we play in the finals. So I'm not too sure if these standings mean too much or if they just have to keep their top four, well, top mm. six. Um, but I would imagine that there is some form of assistance for coming first in seeding. Um, so how it worked last year was they did an A versus H kind of setup. So Eden placed whoever qualified in eighth, second place, place seventh. You know that that's how they did it. So oh, okay, yeah. Mm. So yeah, to get that bracket, it, it does, so that, yeah. actually does matter. It really does. Yeah. So so that's a that's a very important one, especially because there's if you're looking at it as eight teams going through with um, six from Prem and then two two between the uh, the four four player split that we're going to be seeing. Uh, I mean, four team split between Prem and First. So I mean, that's eight teams total, correct? Um, just in case I'm really failing. Eight at teams answer. total qualified. Yeah. So I mean, that would mean if we are going in that order, two Prem teams are going to be fighting it out in the middle of that bracket, and you don't want to be there um, because you you want. When, you, when you're at that point, you don't want to have such a strong adversary in your first match of a bracket. You want to exactly. be able to glide through the start of the bracket to get to the difficult ones as you go. So I think that's, that have, knowing that for the seeding is really important going forward. It'll change. It, it could change a few things. So teams do actually have to still carry on fighting quite hard to keep those positions, which is, which is really nice going forward. I quite like mm. that. 100%. And then Oddity, Perseus, PZK, TCP, uh, Prodigy Race bring up the rear. Can't really say much. They played the top teams. The top teams didn't play each other. We'll have to see how it plays out between them um, when they start playing against each other. So interesting first kind of week and a half where none of the top teams played each other and none of the bottom teams played each other. But anyways. Yeah, it's going to start dividing up the table when that happens because we're going to see more uh, less certain games, let's say. More yeah. games that are up in the air bit more room for a result, you know, that sure. isn't predictable. Garcia, give, let me get some predictions from you here. White Rabbit Gaming versus GG, who's coming out on top of that? I honestly feel that's going to be ooh, a 3-1 three, <laughs> a, a to White Rabbit Gaming. Is that some personal um, bias coming in there? Or? Uh, well, I don't know if you've heard about... Uh, no, that is uh, based on information I have. Okay. Um, but I do think Unidentified are going to beat White Rabbit Gaming. I think it's going to be 3-2 or 3-1 to Identify. The, the last time they played each other, it was 3-1, I believe, to Unidentified? Yeah, it was 3-1. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So you're expecting more of the same from those two teams? Yes. And I know Unidentified have been putting in a lot of work, you know, based on sort of the excellent yeah. results last leg. I think they're just looking to build on that. And that means not dropping games to White Rabbit Gaming. It's early to say, Ghastly, but do you think Unidentified can take it to Eden yet? Oh, yes, definitely. So uh, you're I, expecting I'm better sure. from them than what we got last last leg? I, I am. And you know what? Their the match versus Eden last leg, I, I, I felt was a bit disappointing from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they showed a lot of inflexibility with regards to their picks. And I think... You know, they, they've they figured out their issues over the past few legs, and I really think this is their time to show us that they can be the top team, and I think they've got a really... I think they've got the best chance out of all the Prem teams. 
Yeah, I I think that goes without saying. They they look to be a clear second place. So if they can take that that fight back to even that that would be some exciting stuff to see. Yeah. Um. Then the last match I think worth talking about is that next week. I think this is on Sunday. Yeah. So Sunday is another quite a close potential match, and that's the the resurrection team kill. What a weird sentence to say. That's the weirdest <laughs> phrase ever. Um. The the two res teams facing each other, Perseus and Prodigy, could be uh, quite a close one. But I think Jane, you'd have some insight into which thing, which team you think will come out on top, based based on the fact that you've actually played on both these teams this year. Hello, General Sound. Sorry. <laughs> oh, with Perseus and Prodigy. Sorry. <laughs> he was just busy cheating at Overwatch. Yeah. That's why he wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for looking for hacks. hacks. Oh. Yeah, with Prodigy, with Prodigy is going to be a clear winner in that in that battle. Uh, Prodigy is also a team that grinds a lot and tra- like you know um, gets to the grind and want to get better. So with us having Ericsson and also potentially Raft on their roster, mm-hmm. they will definitely be like I think th- they will beat also um, OG or what what's the new name now? Eight bit. Eight bit oddity. The oddity. Like easily, like for this current standing with the current roster. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's just my. So take expecting on it. them to kind of slot into that that fifth, sixth place. Yeah. Okay. So so probably going to be quite a one-sided three-year match between the two resurrection teams. Yeah. I think Prodigy have shown themselves in pretty it, form. It all like depends on if they're running Raft at the end of the day. Yeah. I think they can beat Perseus about Raft. Yeah, Perseus definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, that's that's the games coming up on Sunday. A few big ones next week. Um, TCP versus GG. And was that Jen now? Yeah. Sorry about okay, that. So how much did you know? Like hit? a few seconds. Okay, so I was just mentioning running through some of the matches for next week. Yeah, uh, which is what I mentioned. Two CP versus Goliath Gaming. That be quite a could be quite a good one to watch. Yeah. And um, Goliath Gaming versus Eden is is going to be a big one. I think so... that's I think that's going to be that every leg. That's an incredibly exciting game. Goliath Gaming versus Energy Esports. Every single leg leg is yeah. explosive. So. so... Oh, I'm just jumping in here with a random thing. I know it's your podcast. I'm going to ask a question now. Do you guys worry (laughs) about, do you ever worry about the split that you've got sort of these like three or four teams that are just on such another level for most of the point? Does that, does that concern you in that Prem division? Yeah. Yes, it does. It does, yeah. It concerns, it concerns us very much. Me too. (laughs) That's why part of, part of our community is to help build, build up teams, you know, help them where we can, like get the, teams performing at a higher level and like we do try to provide that assistance yeah. um it's also a matter of teams coming up to us and you know requesting it we have a coaching channel which general sound handles yeah i, I think it's a I, really uh sorry you, no go for it go for it i was gonna say i also think it's like really frustrating and i'm not bashing bs in any way but the i find the league system for such a for a long time league is for me, I, I believe there's a place for it, but you need to have these smaller tournaments as well because it's really hard to commit to a team for that period of time. Yeah. And the amount of work that has to go in, obviously, when the meta changes and stuff like that, to be that committed for such a long period of time and not be able to change rosters or at least have to keep your core roster and things like that, I don't know the full rules. Like, I mm. worry. I feel like we need more short format tournaments I actually, because that'll allow us, like, more teams to yeah. play more and get that experience and not necessarily commit to an entire year of playing. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I agree, actually agree with I, a, like, Go for it, Gosling. Okay, well, I, I think that having smaller format tournaments and more frequently will bring a lot more players into Overwatch and that will you know, hopefully create more teams and because of that, create more competition and because there's more maybe evenly matched competitions, those teams will be sort of growing together and be pushing themselves to beat wh- whichever team they play and eventually make it to higher levels. And like seeing that that work will pay mm-hmm. off will just be beneficial for us and help close mm-hmm. that gap, you know, reduce that split between the top four and the bottom four. 
Sure, but don't get me wrong. Like, I think what VS Gaming is doing, like, it's desperately needed because I think it, yeah. it also forces people to play all the time. Um, and that's good. We need that as well. And I think that's across all the titles. Like, it's good that they're regularly having to play and you actually have to grind to get to land at the end of the year. Like, mm. I kind of think that also helps with the dedication side as well. So, I, like, I'm not completely against one or, or the other yeah. or saying I'm for one and not the other, but I do think you need... We need more tournaments. That's yeah, what I'm do, trying yeah. to say. Yeah, more, so just more to tournaments, more opportunities, there, definitely. There, there, there are rumors floating around of, of some stuff on the horizon. Not to give any details, or I, I don't know anything, but there, there's talk that that the Overwatch scene is growing. So this this is a kind of this is how it is for now. But there's little doubt in my mind that the tournaments are going to blow up. There's going to be more opportunities for for teams and players to prove themselves uh, in in shorter formats because the biggest problem with vs is you commit to her a whole year my biggest problem with VS, one of my biggest problems with VS, <laughs> you, you commit to, to a whole year of competition and then you finish second you finish third in first division at the end of leg four and that was your whole year quote unquote wasted right you, yeah. you have no opportunity to go to comic con no opportunity to get in the money no opportunity to to really show yourself on on stage you know there's no stage but still show yeah. yourself in that final to have something to show with it when you come out at the end of the year so so that for me is a big problem if you could if you could have in an ideal world you'd have prizes for winning legs yeah. for example actually a tournament actually, the end of leg. actually profitable for ngos to to exactly. promote teams like yeah and even if, of... even if the prizes are, are just um you know tech or peripherals or whatever just something where you can say okay we won leg four oh, yeah that makes us the best that that's a story broadcasters can build on that's a story um players and something you can tell your children (laughs) so that that for me would be a huge difference but but the biggest difficulty with that is that we on fierce is not an overwatch competition this is something sam was mentioning earlier it's a it's a big multiple game um league so they've got to deal with their master side of things and then the prem of Dota and CSGO, League of Legends, COD, you know, all Battlefield, all of the games. So for them to then give prizes out for, for every game at the end of every leg would be inconceivable for them. Sure. So that, that's just the nature of, of what they're trying to do, which is which is great, because at the end of the year, we do get something at least without them. Again, like Sam has mentioned, we, we'd have nothing. Yeah. But um, it, it is a bit disappointing when you get to the end of the year and you've got nothing to show for it. But yeah, like you said, in the at the bright end of the tunnel, there is some things to look forward to that's on the horizon. Overwatch is growing. People are taking note. NGOs are looking at teams as well. Mm-hmm. So it's it, if the future is bright for South African Overwatch, 100%. And then just to, if I can comment on, on Sam, your question about concerns about the, the kind of top four being so, so um, sequestered from the rest of the community or the, the team base um there, there are a couple of teams who, who are knocking on the door there and and although there, there is a, a significant gap between fourth and fifth place um it's not so significant that it's almost inconceivable that any other team will challenge them so for me a team like 2cp even you know perhaps a bit of bias yeah. team like phoenix rising who, who's got the the personnel we just need to hook it up in some way yeah. to to fight where we should be fighting but but look um, at it it's it's a, it's a much better situation than we were last year last year it was one exactly. team running the show and uh, no no other team could to could match the eden's presence i'd rather have a top four oh, than a top, a top one. one yeah at this, i at think this that's way moment. better i like my biggest because we see it in cs with c uh with energy dominating which is starting to change this year like it, oh i'll be in trouble for saying this i'll say it anyway it gets boring for the spectator when energy 100%. Was, or bravado is just yeah. smashing all the opposition. So I think it's good that there's a strong four, but I, you know, you want a strong five or a strong six or a strong seven at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. But I think this is how it goes in, in many competitions. You, the cream rises to the top and you get a kind of a separation in a, in a lot of ways where for a period of time, a team will be on top or two or three or four teams will be at the top of the game. And as time changes, meters change, personnel changes, um, everything gets mixed up again. So. Fingers crossed, this, this is a temporary state of affairs. Uh, so, yeah, I think that brings us to the end of our, our team chat here. <laughs> end of the, the chat about 
current teams, I, I must say, um, I don't really want to reiterate, but I do agree with um, exactly what was being said here, that growth is coming at the moment. It It is a worry, but it's it's something that's sorting itself out luckily yeah. it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's it's about to leave and we're getting growth and possibly some new and, things around the horizon let's and, hope so and I, most... I do know that we've got a lot of tra um what's the word uh traction not traction there's another word <laughs> obstacles that I can't nope still not it but <laughs> close enough <laughs> um impressions okay. we've, yeah we've made an impression but no at, um, the, at the end of the day we have like the community as a as how can i say let's like you know a <laughs> yeah, i'm losing words as well okay. yeah. contagious yeah. cloud you're contagious yeah it's our biggest potential we have the groundwork we have the yeah we have the yeah. groundwork and you know what i mean and wh whatever like ngos or torn like tournament organization is going to take over it's they have the community just to to lead it for them which is amazing yeah yeah uh, so moving on to the next part, of course, that was a very interesting rundown of the current situation with the teams, who we should be looking at, what we should be excited for coming forward, especially Comic-Con two months away, which is, well, yeah, yeah, two months away. It's a month and a half more like it. So it's right around the corner. The legs are wrapping up. Um, moving back to you, though, Sam, um, I've got a few questions here. And some of them being from the community, some of them being from us, we can create a bit of a conversation between us around them. But I think these are these are a few good ones. Um, I think one to to start this one out a bit was actually from Lagbeast, who is a very he, he's he's a fantastic member of the community. He plays for Goliath Gaming, and I'm sure you know him, um, Sam. He says he, you interviewed him. He's of <laughs> course, I know, man. It's Ali. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My my brother used to my brother used to jam with him, man. Back in the back in the he day when like yeah, you know, when sense. goals used to play Dota before we moved to see it. There are like there's a whole story here. Let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of history behind yeah. it. So you are very acquainted with him. So just just a question, a follow up question from him, saying that seeing as you went from a South Africa scene, uh, well South Africans esports scene, regardless of what game really I think would be the, the best way to actually move forward with this one. Um, and you've transferred from here, from the local scene over to the European international scene. What are the biggest differences you've noticed, biggest differences you've noticed in the teams specifically and the different scenes in general, kind of community aside? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's the best way I can put <laughs> Put the question okay. put forward. So I understand exactly what he's saying, and it's funny because it'll tie really well into. I see in in the live chat, obviously, because this is now live. There's a question about running community-driven Overwatch tournaments. It kind of ties into that as well. One of the differences, and this is across the board, so whether it be Overwatch or CS that I've seen moving out of South Africa and and going wherever I've gone, is that the biggest, and it, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's a fault that I see in South African teams is. And it's a terrible thing to, to normally say, and I know it, it triggers people, but it's entitlement. So what happens yeah. is, is they, they see whatever hap what happens overseas. They see sponsors. They see these guys who are living in these really fancy gaming houses. And the comment is always, well, I want that. Um, and it's not worth my time to play because it's not profitable. I'm not making any money. I don't have a sponsor. I don't live in a gaming house. It's hard because I have to balance work and this, and that sucks. But if you look at how the scene grew here or or in asia or in the states like there was there was no money thrown at people people made their own money they they had these community tournaments where they just begged and borrowed for stuff they put on broadcasts in people's houses and they made sure that it was top quality stuff and they just kept grinding and i think mm. the biggest difference and is that we are way more ahead than we realize in terms of we've got these incredible setups we've we've got Comic-Con, we've got Rage, we've got the Metal Stage Studios, we've got other, like, you know, you've got the ACGL guys doing stuff, we've got all these TOs who are doing these incredible things. But we have to understand that, like, it's it's this argument of what came versus the chicken or the egg. Like, to do tournaments, you need sponsors. To get sponsors, you need to have something that they can invest in and that they can have return on investment on. So it's really important to sort of understand that if you're not giving them a product, why should they give you their money if, if yeah. there's nothing if there's yeah. nothing good there so 
we as a community, whether you be an Overwatch or CS, or as an esports community, also have to work harder to be better in the, in the sense that we need to improve every time we need to improve our broadcast we need to improve our production the teams need to and i think from a team point of view i think that the players need to to realize that if you want to be paid to play you need to make an effort to promote yourself it's not just about playing games like you need yeah. to be on social media you need to build a brand and if i hear someone go one more player tell me oh but i don't like i don't like that Okay, cool. But if you like money, best you suck it up. Yeah, best you start. There's yeah. lots of things that you don't that people don't like in their jobs. If you want to make this a job, that is something that you have to do. You have to behave like you need to when you go to tournaments. Be more interactive with people. And if that's not your thing, that's also okay. If you're not someone that wants to be on a camera streaming every day, you don't have to do that. But then still help your organization get its name out of out there. And also, most importantly, which I think we see more overseas as well is that the teams communicate with people outside of the niche. So mm -hmm. for example, just because you play Overwatch at a top level and you know all the top level players doesn't mean you can't make time for those kids that are just jamming Overwatch. Like give them the same amount of respect and time. Don't hate on guys when they come into to play and call them noobs and scream and shout at them. I don't think this mm -hmm. happens so much in, in Overwatch, but you see it a lot in CS and Dota. Like understand that these people are the people that you want to watch your streams because if they're watching yeah. the tournaments and supporting you, but if you're sort of talking down to them and they, they think that you're un, that they can't speak to you and, and that you're, you sort of, they can't connect with you. Why are they going to watch you? They want nothing to do with you. So I think that those are all really important things. And there's a very big difference. The teams that we see overseas are far more willing to be open and to talk than, than what I see in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, something on that is with you saying you're building your brand your brand doesn't exist if you don't have anyone following your brand or no one invested in your brand and you have to give them a reason to want to follow you or want to invest in you and i, I like the point of actually paying more attention to the external community there we're all very it's something i find a lot myself um if i'm hopping between different games i mean i've just recently found myself joining some of the um, Quake community now because Quake Champions is an absolute blast to play and it takes yeah. me back to when I was 12. <laughs> what a cool game. It's such a cool game. I wish more people in this country would play. Well, in this country, I'm fine. In South Africa, I wish more people <laughs> would play. There are a lot yeah. more than you think. I will actually, I'll, I'll, I'll the, send the, you. Actually, actually, the Quake Live community was quite huge. It was just they had their own little community going for years. Yeah, they, a lot of them have moved over to Quake Champions now with uh, yeah. quite a few of them not very happy with Quake Champions. Yeah, a lot of them. Not actually a few. It's, that did it's, move. it's actually quite a lot of them, actually, that's not happy with Quake Champions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... But, I mean, the ones that have adapted to it, there is actually mm. quite a nice community going there, but no one would know about it. It's the same yeah. with the fighting game community. I mean, there's over... I think there's over 700 people in the Discord alone, and that's not just people that play fighting games at home and such yeah. or play online. And every now and then you'll see someone join the community and they're like, oh, I'm like a Diamond 3 player in Street Fighter. Okay, it's not, it doesn't work like that, but you do get Diamond something. Um, I'm not too clued up in Street Fighter specifically. <laughs> and no one's heard of the guy. No one's ever played him, but he's been yeah. in the country playing for like five years. And I think there is, there is a severe lack of um, maybe a link between communities and external communities being people that aren't necessarily invested directly with the community, but could be spectators could be fans I, and things like that i also think it boils down to like not, not like the arena shooters is not as popular as it, as it used to be like 10 years ago mm. yeah no well yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying quake specifically <laughs> yeah. i was more just um talking about other titles, titles yeah, in yeah. general um is something i find and discord being such an amazing tool that lets you um bring communities together and everyone's able to work together and you're able to produce so much through discord yeah. because it is such a nice and streamlined platform um looking at a lack of things like this and i've been a part of i would say three or four different i the best word would be initiatives where we try create a discord server we try open it up for every game we try bring as many people in as possible but no one wants to go out of their, the game they play or the community they have or they end up withholding people in their Discord community of 50 people and they don't want you to share a link to their one yeah. and this this is not limited to Discord I've actually um this this is actually just me voicing my concerns with uh gaming in South Africa not even esports specifically where there is a lot of 
these these people are mine. I don't want to share with you. We see it happen. Well, it it has happened on Twitch before, where no, I don't want you to be part of my community because you're going to take my viewers. I don't want to raid you because <clears throat> you're going to take my viewers. Yeah, and yeah. that's such a backwards way of thinking compared to. Rather, share the viewers, expand things, because they're going to tell other people about something, and it's that, that's how you grow a community, instead of being so Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen, like, streamers that were nothing, that, like, just backbone of each other from, like, bigger streamers. And if the South African community can, community can do that, it will be a huge plus, because more people know who's who, you know what I mean? And it will mm. create such a marketing platform for everyone in South Africa. 100% yeah, and that, that also yeah. branches out back to esports being our, our main main concern here, um, yeah. where brands making a brand for yourself, you need to do that. And we also find that a lot. I remember we had a discussion uh, not too recently, I wouldn't say, where we were actually telling people in the Overwatch community, hey, you need to brand yourself. Don't try stick yourself to someone else's name and play oh, yes. under that only exclusively or... that was in the context of, of broadcasting and... yeah of yeah. broadcasting I, I, yeah. I was just i'm just going very broad with it no, yeah. I'm just recalling it. yeah so i mean we, we've had it where well in this specific case it was people broadcasting and producing costs and things like that but limiting themselves to just vs gaming and um not really i know there isn't really much else going on in the overwatch scene at the current moment but there are other avenues and other options for example overseas that you can cast for um and things like that and people weren't people are generally against the branding thing and i i mean with what sam just said now they keep saying no i don't want to do that that's not my that's not my thing but sorry buddy you're gonna have to start <laughs> doing things you don't like um and yeah. yeah you might find that you do actually like it if you give it a try so, i also think yeah i mean i was gonna say moving away from like the the brand and the casters thing as well from a player perspective because i know that like, the original question was the teams and the players like i think because the community is so small we don't have these tournaments there's nothing stopping us on a sunday from uh, a goliath when, they, when they're not playing vs to say cool we're gonna play this team and maybe we're going to do like a, a scrim with a, a more amateur team and we're going yeah. to kind of help them along and teach them. And you know what? We're going to stream that. So you're going to be able to hear it so you can yeah. learn as well. Yeah. I think stuff like that will also get viewers because then you get the more casual gamer who's playing Overwatch on console, who maybe loves Overwatch but doesn't quite understand competitive. They're going to come. They can watch that. They can see that. I think more teams have to do that as well. And I know it sucks. And I know they just want to, they want to play their game and they want to compete. But creating those types of pieces of content and stuff are also going to allow more people to understand what the game is about to watch it and also to connect with those teams in a way so that's also something that they could do i think and then ultimately just grind because mm -hmm. at the end of the day the better you play the more people are going to watch yeah. anyway it's... so the better the gameplay is the more people will see watching it it's funny you mentioned that because we actually had this discussion about making like invitational teams of like the best players in south africa against the best players or maybe all -star even yeah. all-star teams or get the all-star team to play like a EU scrim against like a top team and just showcase that. And it's definitely... We should do that. Yeah. We should definitely do that. That would be... <laughs> I think... Cool. I, 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 think just that's me. I just added myself to this. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was... I mean, you came from your side with a fantastic idea. I also think that teams... I'm going to keep using the word incubate because I think it's a it's a it's quite a nice word to use. And I <laughs> want right now. So <laughs> having um, the really strong teams doesn't have to be the tippy top, but actually bringing in... Playing against a lower team, as you said, um, broadcasting it live, bringing something to the community that isn't necessarily playing in a team professionally or anything like that. And being able to give that type of content, it's, it's never been done here to my understanding, especially on the Overwatch community. Mm -hmm. So I really I really think we should move forward with that. And yeah. then on top of that, this all-star thing needs to happen. And I think, <laughs> Sam, you might just be our golden ticket to get it started. So <laughs> I can make that a that contender's connection. <laughs> I can I can try I can try no promises but I can try. Oh, so so when you're bringing containers down here, Sam, since you you're making things happen. <laughs> oh, no. no, I mean I don't. Even, I, wish, I wish I had that kind of power we, here, we, but I don't, unfortunately. Let's 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 get yeah. servers down here first. You you host EU containers, so you must run the whole of Blizzard, right? That's oh yeah. Of course. I have all the, I have, 
I can tell you that the that I, I know that um some of the the guys that that I work with get very frustrated because at every opportunity if we go for a dinner we were at land finals for season one and we had the North American um the whole sort of contenders crew there with the European crew and we all went for like a team dinner and as we sat down I was like right first order of business when is South Africa getting service <laughs> and they they I'm not allowed to bring it up anymore you know but yeah. I, I mean I also think. I think what is really great is you can actually still, it's not horrible playing Overwatch at all in South Africa. So no, I don't have no. some other games. So we're fine for now. I still don't have an answer on the service, do you, though, guys. I'm sorry. Sam, <laughs> do you, Sam, do you ever get like asked like from internationally, like what's going on in South Africa with Overwatch? Definitely. And I think that there is, there's definitely an interest. And I do think, uh, I think we, we're really lucky because Blizzard's represented by the distributor in South Africa's Mega Rom. And I actually think that they have quite an interest in, in the local scene and they pay attention to it, which is awesome. And I know when I got you in season one and the moment, funny enough, Leg Day found out that I was from South Africa, like he knew one or two players. And he was like, oh, I know the South African that I've seen play and I've seen this guy play. So it's not like people aren't paying attention. They know we're there. Um, I think yeah. we obviously still have to just keep grinding but i do think that the harder we grind that there's some players that like like i said leg day had kind of spotted them and, and knew who they were and i think that the more we grind and the more we sort of do that i also think it doesn't hurt to reach out to to european contenders teams and say hey we saw you love to chat to you i find the guys are are really friendly and and easy to talk to if there's a player that that you admire and there's a player that you're seeing in contenders, you know, reach out to them, talk to them. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'd appreciate it just as much, you know? Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I really like that response. That's that's great. And I hope a lot of people actually come back to listen to this because this is a really nice thing to take away to to branch out the community. And as I said, as I was saying with the, um, Sometimes we're too close knit, and being able to bridge the gap a bit with the international scene. Uh, close, close knit is the wrong word. Insular is the word you're looking for. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, sun being sun, close, close sun knit, doing sun things. <laughs> Are you literally just googling and putting words into like? No, 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 no. no. He's. A... Um, so just, that's just true. I mean, the time is um, is getting away with us a bit here. So I'm just going to quickly throw um, the last one of Lagby's questions and two from Mike Lele. Um, Lagby just wanted to end it off with, in your opinion, when looking at the South African Overwatch scene, do you think we're on track to become as big or at least able to compete in the Contenders League sometime? I think so. I think if you look at all the leagues, like if you look at the Australian league that they've, or I think they call it Pacific, um, Pacific and yeah. the South, yeah, South American, I think that we're definitely on the right track. Uh, I think it's just a matter of finding out where we fit in the bigger scheme of things. Um, obviously, there needs to be trials as well. So I don't know if it would be South Africa, if it would be Southern Africa. I don't know where or how they'd fit us in. And I always think, I think that's also the biggest problem for not just Blizzard, for anyone. Um, for any sort of big tournament organizer or publisher is Africa as a continent is so big. Um, and it's not the same in Europe when the UK is, is sort of playing someone here in the Ukraine. It's not the same as when someone in North Africa is playing someone in South Africa. Oh, yeah, as, not we, at all. as we know, it's kind of impossible. So I think that the logistics all have to come into it. But I definitely think if we keep going, without a doubt, I'm sure that, that they'll start paying attention. I think that they are already. Um, but we just have to keep playing and, and playing better. I don't know if we'll see uh, a South African contenders, but I also believe that the one thing that's really rad about Overwatch is that it is so inclusive and it really is about making sure that everyone has an opportunity to play. So I think with that mission in mind, they're not going to exclude Africa forever. Uh, so I'm sure it'll come at some point. And that is the most exciting news we could possibly hear. I've, I've actually seen that's, that. That's my I've, Can I just clarify? That's my opinion. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've actually... Just, just having an opinion, opinion is well. love. No one, no one, no one speaks to me. No one at Blizzard Statement. speaks to me. They don't, I, yeah, no one at Blizzard tells me anything. So I try get. I, I keep asking about the servers. I don't say. Well, that's my opinion. I believe that the, their idea is to eventually expand this all over the world. So I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, at know, some point we'll see. It. I know the. Oh, sorry, sorry, Sam. I like, I know like there, there's been like Reddit posts last year when like an African team didn't make the World Cup, and people were asking on Reddit like, why isn't no why are no African teams are representing this World Cup? It's not really a World Cup with not like without all the continents representing. You know what I mean? So 
it's brought up South Africa as well. South Africa being in the World Cup the first for the first year, and mm-hmm. I wonder if uh, I don't know if if it, uh, the conversation happened again. So it's good that there's actually like there's actually those conversations happening. I'm sure they are, and I think like again, yeah. like I said, Africa's a really like they've got to look at the whole of Africa. Mm-hmm. They've got to look. It's the same as like there's there's also and it's the same across all esports titles. I just think that we need to look at the logistics of of the country we're in. I don't think anyone ignores us. I'm sh- I'm sure that they know we exist, um, but I just think things take time, and it's it's not as simple. There has to, you know, there's staff and people that have to get paid to make these things happen. That, that that's not free. So I'm sure at some point that they'll include South Africa along the lines. Um, but I do think that we also need to do our bits as a community to to grow it in our own way as well. Completely, completely. And I think this is what we've gathered most from this chat. And just as a as a last question, just to close things off, or before we close things off, um, as you've already answered the first question from Michael Lele tenfold with a lot more information than what he was looking for. But last question coming in would be, what is one thing in contenders that you feel would improve our own community? The focus on the players, I don't think we as a community, I think we talk a lot about teams. I think we talk a lot, and this is actually not just with Overwatch, this is with esports in general in South Africa. We mm. talk a lot about teams. Um, we don't talk about the players in the teams, and we talk a lot about broadcast talents. I hear more about broadcast talent than I do about players, and it drives me mad. We really <laughs> need to focus, and what I love about contenders is our job is to highlight players, because we're obviously mm. on that, they're, they're on their part to pro, they're playing in contenders to get picked up for all, you know, it's about highlighting these players and telling their stories. I, th- I really feel that that's something that we need to bring back to South African Overwatch, to South African CS, to South African Dota. Our jobs, whether we be in broadcast or whether we be an MGO or whether we own a team or whether we play in a team is really to to highlight those players um, and to allow them to pop off and stand out. So mm. I'd love that to come back, that we become more about focusing on highlighting players over and above anything else and which I is hard that... when i was about to say it's really hard to highlight players we'll jump teams a million times and rage quit but i mean we'll figure yeah. that one out down the line. <laughs> yeah i think i think as the the scene grows becomes more professional more popular um the eyes will come left of mm. less of it will come more off the broadcasters and onto to players and teams and as we've got more opportunities to expose players um to the community through through more tournaments or you know all star initiatives or whatever that that'll give us an opportunity to to build personalities and stories around players themselves and and highlight them um, in the way you're suggesting. So so my feeling is that it's only a matter of time before we, we get on that level, you know. For yeah. sure. But also having you know a bit of focus on broadcasters is also you know the broadcasters are there to expose Overwatch. Mm-hmm. They they're really there to expose to sort of show it off to everyone else and having you know maybe not the complete you know have the full investment in the players but having you know an investment in the in the broadcast talent i think is also going to it, it will only help yeah. I if, if you haven't guessed so. yet ghastly is broadcast talent so no but the truth of it is <laughs> and i mean this is it's, it's he's he's also not wrong because i think it's easier for someone who broadcasts to build a brand and that brand mm-hmm. will bring eyeballs to something yeah. um, and will bring eyeballs to players. So he's not wrong. I think that helps as well. Uh, if you can focus, if, if, if there's a broadcaster who can build, I mean, look, you, you're interviewing me. I, I, we all know I suck at Overwatch. Um, <laughs> I, I think if you can, if you can build, if you can build that and that person is able to bring eyeballs back onto where it needs to be, that's a positive as well. So it's, it's really just like a, an ecosystem that all has to work together at the end of the day. Yeah, I think uh, Ghastly can jump in here. That That is the approach we're kind of taking at the moment. Yeah. Just, uh, we, we, we put a focus this year on, on broadcasting quite heavily, mm-hmm. um, focusing on, on getting, make sure we've got casters casting games every night. Not Maybe not every night, but as often as at possible. Least, at least the highlighted have, like, games, yeah, will cast it. Exactly. We want to have X, not, not, you know, a few games casted a week and, and guys like Cloudburst, Trenok, and, and more recently, Ghastly. Um, really Whoa. putting putting eyes on on the teams and and players. I think that that's important, and I also just think at the end of the day, the better the broadcast, the more entertaining it is, the more people who watch, the more people who notice the players. Again, it's it's all that eco structure that you need mm. at the end of the day. 
And um, yeah. just a quick, quick question, Sam. Do you think like from your experience, like interviewing players, is would that like add more to a story after a game, like the best player or stuff, stuff like that? Because it's something we do used to do, and now we're not really doing it anymore. Do you think it's like will mm. add value to to broadcasters in general? I think it adds value to the. I think it does add value to a broadcast, and I think people enjoy seeing it. I think it's really hard to interview players after an online game because they're tired. A lot of the time, maybe their sound isn't as great. It's yeah. difficult to get them, so there's a big delay between game and them. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do it on contenders, and I'm really lucky. But I have when I do that interview, it's it's there's a bunch of other people handling it for me in the background. When mm. when it comes to what you guys are doing, I think it's really tough because you've got to get that whole thing organized while you're also streaming a game. Um, but I do think it would be nice to see more players being potentially interviewed in a separate capacity, doing these sort of chats, maybe talking. I mean, I'd be really interested to see them talking less about sort of how do we grow Overwatch and maybe having conversations with them about certain comps that they're playing, why they're playing that more in-depth analysis into yeah. a game. VOD reviews with a player would be amazing. Like all of those things I think would help as well. And that sort of content is stuff that internationally people I think would want to watch and find interesting as well. Yeah. No, I guess I, that's I, part I, of why we're doing this in the uh, first yeah. place, right? <laughs> I think we, we talked we, we more about, we're very more team orientated. And I think moving into a direction mm. where we do talk about in-depth analysis on like, on like heroes and how it's meant to be played. What's the current meta? How does that hero, specific hero fit in the current meta and all that type of stuff. So it will be really good. I think it will be a good, really good conversation to have um, on, on this podcast. Yeah, from, from my side, quickly, um, something that uh, where I casted with Visions recently, I think it was yeah. uh, Tuesday, uh, it was Wednesday night, Tuesday, Wednesday night, um, we actually pulled in Grifflet from Eden, um, and we crowned him MVP for the match, as I try to do at the end of each cast, I try to speak to my co, ask um, who do you think is MVP, who do you think shown the most here, we, sadly, we don't really take that information down and do anything with it following, Yes. But with Visions, we did actually have Grifflet come into the cast um, for a short while afterwards for about a five, I think it was five to seven minutes or something like that. We had a just quick chat with him, asked him how the game was going, where does he think he can improve, where does he think his team can improve, things like that. And it worked really nicely, um, but it also happened very smoothly, which for a first time is, as, as Sam was saying, having trying to organize that whilst you're managing a stream and whilst everything's online, usually there's going to be this huge delay, but we're very lucky with that. And that's still the reason why I'm very hesitant to do that in the broadcasts. And it's a, if there was a way to manage it easier, it would be very cool. Um, yeah. So I think maybe we can just brainstorm that a bit internally. If we, if we had like dedicated community. producers and that kind of, that'd yeah. be awesome. You know? It'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm. That's something we got to work towards. Yeah, um, sure. You know, once our broadcasts start maybe gaining a bit more traction, once Overwatch starts getting a few more eyes, people are going to expect a higher level uh, of yeah, content. And quality. I think that will open up the door and sort of opportunities for people to maybe specialize more in that sort of stuff. Very, very good point there. And I must say, um, anything else that anyone would like to say? Or do you think it's about time we wrap this one up nice with a little bow? I have something to say. Go, Go for it. Thank you so much for having me on this. It was tons of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's, it's rad to talk to familiar voices back home. And <laughs> I do hope after all of this, rather than playing Overwatch, we all go to leg day stream to watch him play The Sims for the first time. <laughs> I, have, I have bad news for you. And that's the fact that there are currently pickup games going on and they are very popular. So but good for us. not Gen so good general, for leg day. General uh, Sound will raid his channel and anybody yeah. who's sticking around will automatically yeah, yeah, yeah. be directed there. Yeah, He's idea. so excited. This is it. He's leaving Overwatch for The Sims. You guys have to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Sims play. I don't understand. I was actually joking with him last night when I said he should do this. So it's, I don't know what's, I don't know why he took me seriously, but it should be fun. But <laughs> see, honestly, lucky. <laughs> yeah, for sure. On a serious note, though, thank you so much for having me. It was, it's an honor to be on this, and it's really just like, I love what you guys are doing, so thank you for considering uh, me as an interview. Interviewee? Inter yeah, interviewee, I think. A, I a, a partner on the podcast. Let, let's Yay. call it that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, really. It's, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, we're really happy that you agreed to come join us. I know that your schedule is probably a bit hectic up there as well. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, the feeling's mutual there. We're really happy to have you on, and it's been a great, great chat. Nice one, guys.
hundred percent. Thanks for being on. Hopefully we can have you on in the future. That'd be dope. Do like a, a catch up thing. Remember how bad we were before? Now look how amazing we are now. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, thanks so much for joining us. It, it really means a lot to us to have you on. Someone with with eyes uh, on on the global sphere, the South African presence um, in Europe and and worldwide in general. It's awesome for us, and we're glad you had a good time. Cool. Thanks, cool. guys. Cool, man. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And yeah, remember that it's Pugs. And if you guys are going to be in Pugs, just get into the Discord and hit that exclamation, Pugs. Don't forget to raid like this stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is... Do wait, that. how do you raid again? <laughs> slash raid. Slash raid. Forward, forward slash raid. Forward slash raid. Well, what's, his, um, what's his stream name? Leg Day Gaming. So it's forward is slash... Is there any underscores, any dashes? Not that I know of, no. I'll quickly double check. No, it's definitely just leg day gaming. So then in, in yeah, your chat, just type in gaming. forward slash, yeah, right. forward slash leg day gaming. I mean, forward slash raid space leg day gaming. And okay. all of our viewers will be heading um. there to go check out the Sims professional play. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, th yeah, thanks so much to everyone who watched. Really. It's great seeing so many people in the chat and giving feedback is really nice. We're able to work small things in there. But for me, good night. Cheers. Cheers.